Welcome to another Riding Edge vlog. Today we're going to do a edit with Affinity Photo. It's been a while since I've done one of these and I just downloaded the 1.7 update. I thought, well, we should uh, talk about that a little bit. If you don't uh, use Affinity Photo, you use a different editing software, this video might not be for you. Or you might be interested in, in seeing what uh, Affinity Photo has to offer in editing black and white photography. The image I'm going to work on is one I just recently took. Came across this scene, hopped out of the car, took a quick shot, and uh, I really kind of like it. So I think we'll use it as uh, the image to edit. And the way we're going to edit this image is something I've only started doing last night. We're going to convert this photo from a digital file in the tone mapping persona in Affinity Photo. It's, a, it's, a, it's an approach that I've never done before. It's fly on me. It's, it's an approach I've never done before, except for last night, of course. But I'm finding that there, there's potential here. So I want to, we're going to go ahead and, and do this photo using the tone mapping persona just to show another way, an alternative way to convert to black and white. Now this 1.7 update really is, seems to be just more of a performance boost, kind of a performance update. And I, on my old computer, I'm happy to say that I can even see the effects of that uh, update. The raw developing does seem to go quicker. The brushes seem a little snappier. So we're going to head into the office. We're going to have a raw image loaded up on the computer and, and uh, take the first spin. Okay, now we're starting with this raw image in the develop persona. And we're going to try and get this looking good. Something that I've noticed on this new version of Affinity Photo is that the uh, histograms seem to do a better job of representing what I'm seeing here. This now my older version of Affinity Photo, <laughs> the uh, histogram never corresponded very well with with uh, what I was seeing on the on the screen. I want to make sure I try to preserve these highlights though. I don't need a real contrasty image here. I'm trying to uh, work with a fairly flat image to start with. And we're going to be taking this into the tone mapping persona. I think we're looking pretty good right here. So one thing you need to be aware of, this little icon here, the assistant options. I'm going to click on that and make sure you're exporting, outputting your RAW in a 32-bit HDR for this um, black and white conversion. Typically I would use a 16-bit and I'd be using a, a plug-in like Silver FX Pro. But for this approach, I'm going to be using the biggest file with the most information I can get. And I've got my tone curve set to take no action. So I don't have, it's basically just as raw data as you can get. So I'm going ahead and hit develop. I think what I've got going here looks fine. So now I'm going to go up here to the tone mapping persona. I click on that. And it, when it gets finished here, it's going to look terrible. <laughs> now last night's the first time I've actually ever done this. So uh, I might be a little clumsy at it right now. Now what I want to do here is come over here to the tone compensation lever. And I'm going to dial it all the way back. So basically taking away everything, anything that the tone compensation was doing. 
And I'm going to turn this into black and white right here by taking away all the saturation. Now I'm going to come up here to local contrast. I'm going to turn that up to where it looks, where it starts looking good. And I'm going to adjust the black point. Now I don't want to turn the uh, local contrast up too high. It starts to look awfully over-processed. <laughs> So that's that's nothing. I'm going to turn it up here to where it looks good. Around 50% looks looks pretty good. Just the black point just a little bit. Now I I'm pretty happy with how quickly the uh, black and white image is already coming together, just by using these few levers. A few sliders. Now I think I, I think I'm going to go ahead and finish this in the photo persona, but I, I think I really I think I like this. I think this looks pretty good. And that's all that is for the tone mapping. It's pretty basic. Hit apply. Now I might as well go ahead and crop this image a little bit. See if we can tighten it up a little. I shot it a little looser than I probably should have. I was a little limited on time and I didn't want to trespass to take the picture. So uh, this is kind of where we ended up. Let's straighten the horizon just a little bit. I think it just feels a little off to me. <clears throat> and I think that looks pretty good. Apply. Okay, now I'm going to go over here to the levels. And I'm going to check my highlights. And I will really want to brighten up the uh, flowers in the field. And I'm going to just ignore what hap what's happening in the sky right now. I'm just going to try to brighten up this area in here. Because this is, these are white flowers and I want that to be evident. And I'm going to bring in some of the dark areas. Some of the blacks back in a little bit. Add a little uh, contrast. Okay, I think I'm going to go with that. I, I'm, what I'm working on here is, is this area in here. This is my... All these adjustments I'm making is just for this here. Now what I'm going to do is hit the B key for my brush. Make sure it's on black. And I'm going to leave the opacity at 50%. Because I'm going to bring the sky back to what it was in a couple steps. At this first pass, we're going to go over this top part, background, at 50%. I think that looks looks about right. So I'm re I'm uh, removing about 50% of what I did to it with the brush on black. And I'm going to do the rest of the sky, but I'm going to try to keep the tone of the tree where it is there because I kind of like that. So I'm going to add the rest of the 50% back to just the, just the clouds. I'm not trying to make it look stormy. I don't want to overdo the clouds, but I do want them to have texture. Because it was a pretty interesting sky. It had a lot of nice detail. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Make sure I didn't miss anything here. It should be about 100% now. Okay, that looks 
looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and flatten the image. Now I I think this looks pretty good. I, I really do like this. Let's let's check the uh, levels again here. See where we're at. So you hold down the option key, grab the highlight slider. You can see the skies back in with the level of the field. You can see where just a little bit of the white, the dark specks are. It just shows where the white is that has no detail. That looks, looks about right. Now let's just check the uh, shadow highlights. See if just adding a little more in the shadows makes it pop just a little bit more. There we go. I, I think that looks pretty good. Let's uh, something here is bugging me is this cell tower back here in the background. Let's go ahead and see what we can do about that. It looks like I have a couple spots on the sensor as well. The in painting brush tool. Let's see what happens here. spots here yeah there we go well that's it I'm pretty impressed with this uh, update and I really like what I'm getting using the uh, tone mapping as a way to convert my images to black and white I'm just what I'll do now is I'll I'll flatten this image. Might as well put a border around it, as I always do. Make that. Or I'll put a nine, a twelve. Do the math. It's the math. Add a new fill layer, drag it behind, and there you go. Just export it, and we're done. Now, typically I would use SilverFX Pro to do my black and white conversions, but I really am I'm seeing there's a lot of potential here editing in a 32-bit file. Uh, it gives me a lot of room to, uh, to do some stuff. But the, the final image really is being done in the photo persona. The fine tuning of the image. But I get there pretty quick using the tone mapping persona. Well, that's it, guys. Thanks for coming along for another The Edit with Affinity Photo. And this would be 1.7 update. It's looking really good. I think I'll be using this for another two years. Until next time, thanks for coming along for the ride.